In this video, I'm going to show you how to use our newly updated dot to dot tool. You can get to the tool by clicking on activity books, dot to dot tool, or you can just click on the icon on your dashboard. Start by selecting your trim size. We have all of the standard KDP trim sizes. I'm going to use eight and a half by 11. If you want, you can use a custom trim size of anywhere up to 12 inches by 12 inches. The number of pages here is used to create the guides. When you click on this ruler, you can add guidelines. Your gutter margins are determined by the number of pages that you have. So that is what this number is for. And to get started, you have to upload your file. I'll show you the first one I'm going to use. Okay, this is the file that I'm going to use for the first example. Let's upload that. After the file is uploaded, the tool is going to automatically place dots on the first path. If you go under path settings, you'll see that there are five paths here. This is the first path, the second path, the third path, the fourth path, and the fifth path. If when it loads the image, the dots aren't where you expect them to be, you can go through here and figure out which path you want them on and say make dot path. You can also just click over here on the path you want to make the dot path and then click down here. So there's two different ways to do it. The first thing you notice about this image is that it is too big for this page. You can click on add guides and it will add the guides based on the page number that you put in here. Now we can make this smaller by clicking on adjust image. And then we can just resize it, we can move it around. And then when you get it the way you want it and the place you want it, you click on done adjusting image. Now let's add a title. So let's go under title settings and you can add a title to your page. Let's have this one say connect the dots and you can adjust this as well. You can drag it to wherever you want. You can make it bigger, you can rotate it. You can change the font over here. You can change the font size as well. Let's look at the dot settings tab. In this tab, you can set the size of the dots, so you can make your dots bigger, or you can make your dots smaller. You can also change the number of your dots. And that's all done under here. You can also do move dots, but when you move the dots, you want that to be the very last thing that you do. So let's move on to the dot label settings. In this tab gives you the ability to switch the direction of your labels. Right now they're going clockwise, one, two, three, four, five, etc. We can have it go counterclockwise and now they're going this direction. You can also use letters instead of numbers and it will go through the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z and then it will start back over again with A. Skip count gives you the ability to count by, for example, twos, threes, fours, whatever you would like. You can also set the start counting at. So if you wanted to count by tens, for example, you could have it start with 10. And now you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. The size of the labels is the font size for your label, so you could make them bigger or you can make them smaller. You can also change the offset for your labels. So the X offset moves it left and right and the Y offset moves it up and down. Under the path settings, you can set the stroke width the stroke color and the fill color. 
this restart counting on a different path. I'll show that to you later on with a different image. You can select paths using this drop down. You can also select paths by clicking on them. Let's say we want to fill these paths. After you click on all of them, you click on fill dot path, and then those paths will get filled. You notice it says you cannot fill the path the dots are on. You can never fill the dot path or stroke the dot path. If you try, you're going to get this message. But you can also stroke these. Let's say you wanted to stroke it with a orange color. Then you change it here and then click on stroke dot path. And now these are orange and gray. And if you want to see what your dot to dot is going to look like without the path on here, you click on hide dot path. And this is going to show you what it's going to look like when you download it. We don't need our guides anymore, so I'm going to hide them. So once you have everything the way you want them, except for where the dots are located, you can go back into dot settings and click on move dots. And now you can click on the dots you want to move. So we want to have dots on all the corners. So we're going to move those two and let's move that one to there and maybe move this one over to here. And then when you're done moving the dots, click on done moving. And now you can download your connect the dot puzzle as either a PDF or as a ping. So let's click on download PDF. And this is what our final puzzle looks like. Let's look at another example. Here is what the file looks like. It's two ghosts. And here's what it looks like imported into our dot to dot tool. So as with last time, I'm going to check the guides and make sure this is all in here and it is, but I do want to move it down a little bit because I want to add a title. So let's click on adjust image, move it down, done adjusting image. Now let's go add that title. Let's just say boo as the title. Make it bigger, maybe rotate it. Let's find a different font. Let me use this font. It's a little bit more Halloween-ish. Okay, I like the title. I like where it's placed. I'm going to remove my guides now. The next thing I want to do is delete some of the paths. When you have a thick line, it's going to give you two paths for that line. So you just click on this one, click on this one, and click on delete path. Now those extra lines are gone. And I want to make my dots go on both ghosts. So I can select this path, this path, and say make dot path. And now the dots go on both paths. Now you can either have it like this, where it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then continues 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 20. Or you can go under path settings and click on restart counting on different path. Now it's counting 1 to 20 on both paths. And if you change the number of dots to 10, for example, it's now going to count 1 to 10. So it's going to go the number of dots you put in here is how many dots you're going to have on each one of your paths. Uh, maybe 15 would be a good number. So let's go with that number. And let's say I don't like that mouth and I want to delete that. I can delete it. And let's fill in the eyes. Hide the dot path. I like the way that looks. So this is what I want to do is save that. Is it before I save it, I think I... I want to move this point and this point down to the very corner. So let's click on move dots. Let's move that there and move that there. And now I like that. So we can download it. Let's download it as a PDF. And here's what it looks like. So here's our final dot to dot. Here's what our image looked like that we uploaded. 
And if we wanted to do letters, go back into dot labels, we can use letters instead and maybe make our labels a little bit smaller if we wanted like that. And then you can download it again. So if you download it as a ping, then you're going to get a transparent ping that looks like this. And that covers all the different things that you can do with the dot to dot tool. I hope this has helped you understand better how to use this tool. If you have any question, ask them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.